All right, y'all. I can't let you go to sleep just yet. I know some of y'all was like, yo, I was just about to go to sleep, but okay, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch. All right. Listen, man, we got to solve the case before the night ends. We got to solve this case. This is the disturbing case of Chad Isaac, I think it may be. It just spelled, what is up with, I, I don't know. Maybe Chad Isaac, it's at, I, I don't know. But we got to solve this case. So listen, get ready. This is that chapter. You know what type of situations could be presented. So prepare yourself, all right? No, we be making too much noise waking everybody else in the house up. I, I see the comments. <laughs> I see the comments, man. Listen, so if you're new to this channel, Hit the subscribe button. Join the fam. Real quick, moment of silence for the haters. That's enough. Now run the likes up. Make sure y'all hit that like button. It's time. Hey, you, and welcome. My name is Mike. And in this whole video, we're talking about, we're talking about a chat. Maybe even the chat. And that, my friends, is Chad Trollin. Isaac. What a name. Isaac. What a guy. Chad is the man from Mandan, and he was a chiropractor in North Dakota. We're back there again, so happy days. And when all the pieces of the puzzle point at Chad, well, you gotta ask who put it together. Because it doesn't take a genius to figure out where it leads, but why is still for grabs. All right, so here, what do you say we give it a go? You and I, come on. trying to profile nobody but okay okay all right so almost smack dab in the middle of North Dakota lies the city of Mandan it's home to about 22,000 people and it's part of the Bismarck metro area <laughs> and what can you find in Mandan that you can't find literally anywhere else uh, this, uh, I don't know its motto is where the West begins, and if this is where it begins, you'll be praying for the end. It's an agricultural livestock town, but more recently power, drilling, the oil fields to the north have taken over. Watch the video on Dougie Carlisle for more on that one. And if you lived in the Bismarck Mandan area, you may have rented from RJR Maintenance and Management, who, well, maintained a, a load of places in the local area. About 3,000 of them. A family business in, uh, well, in that, since the late 90s. Having a little over 20 employees, let's meet some of them. Four, to be precise. Bill and Lois Cobb, 50 and 45 respectively, had been married for many, many years, with four children and three grandchildren. Bill, he worked as a maintenance supervisor, Lois in accounts. Adam Fuhrer was 42 years old and he worked at Orgy or Maintenance as a, well, whatever you need to do in air conditioning, toilets, whatever. And finally, Robert Fockler, who was in fact a co-owner with his wife of Orgy Or. The four were known as the Coffee Club. They'd always be in there first thing in the morning, going through an entire pot before anyone else arrived, hanging out, shooting the shit. By all accounts, they were lovely, caring people. Tenants of theirs had, had really nothing but nice, kind things to say about them. They were very easy to deal with. They were grand. Never really any snags to speak of, uh, except for one in early April 2019, when a person was, you know, they were gonna have an employee of RJ Orr come over to their apartment to, to, do a, to do a walkthrough, right? Well, they never showed up, this person, they were looking at the clock, no show from RJ Or, so they decided to pop over to their office to see, you know, what's the crack. And they were uh, greeted by sirens. Be advised, CPR in progress. CPR in progress. 911, one to stand in emergency. 1106 32nd Avenue, southwest in Mandan at RJR office. Owners down, bleeding, profusely. You know what happened? Uh, no, I walked into work and I found him on the floor. On the 1st of April, 2019, at about 7.30 a.m., ambulances were called to the offices of RJ or maintenance by an employee who had just arrived. Unfortunately, this was no April Fool's Day. 
This was quickly transferred over to the police who rocked up to the office building in South East Mandan to find... Uh, a scene. Inside were the bodies of four victims. Three male, one female. They were... You guessed it. Robert Fockler, Adam Fuhrer, and Bill and Lois Cobb. Dang. All four had been stabbed and shot to death. How the victims were killed was not released at the time, but this was, obviously, it would be big news anywhere, but especially big news in Mandan, a city that hadn't had a homicide since 2016, and the police were saying they, they didn't have a suspect in custody. Police are releasing few details at this point, and we still, still don't know how many bodies have been found or the cause of death. However, when officers arrived, they did find more than one body. The Bureau of Criminal Investigation and Morton County Sheriff's Office are still investigating right now, and I recently spoke to a few bystanders who were at the scene. I had a walkthrough scheduled of move out, and they never showed, and I came here to see what was going on, and I stayed. They've been great people to lease from, always very courteous and kind and caring, and so I just want to know that they're all right. They're good people. For today, Mandan police investigating after finding several bodies at a property management building in Mandan this morning. And there is a press conference that started about 30 seconds ago. Let's listen in. Uh, like, you know how some, some cases you can hear, you can auto automatically start, you know, developing in your mind what could possibly be the reasoning or you have some point of origin to start from to say, ah, okay, well, maybe I have nothing, nothing. Not, 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 not a, I have right now to, to tell you, huh? Yeah, big scratch to the back of the head, big scratch, big confusion. So as soon as this investigation, like I said, this investigation is, is underway, uh, a lot of the information you're going to ask me, I cannot answer. It's, it's very important that our investigators have the ability to follow up and look into leads and everything else before any of those questions can be answered. Look at that. Even a cop seems like ah, he has nothing. And so with this hurricane, they spread out from there trying to find out who did this. And one of the first things they did was go around to local businesses, shops, that sort of thing, and ask them, hey, if you have any video surveillance, CCTV maybe, hey, I'll lash it over to us there, would you mind? And they would. This would then eventually lead to a man named Chad Isaac. 44 years old, who on April 4th, 2019, three days after the murders at about 3.46 p.m., well, Chad was arrested and charged with four counts of murder, burglary, concealment of a vehicle, and unauthorized use of a vehicle. He was arrested at a traffic stop, and a search warrant of his vehicle led to more evidence being discovered. More evidence that did not look good for Chad. I was about to say, are we watching like the camera view from somebody on a SWAT team or something? Weirdly, this was something he was pretty, he's pretty happy about. Look at him, he's chill. Oh, this fool is smiling. Who smiles in their mugshot? All right, definitely he's off here. But now I'm still thinking like, okay, it wasn't like these, these people were young. One of the couples I, I vividly remember were 45, 50 years old, okay? So what type of itch situation with these people that would cause you to do them all in at once? So, okay, I'm stepping back, I'm thinking, okay, maybe money. Money's always at the root of something somewhere. Or I, I wouldn't say it's someone's 
like a, a, an affair or anything because then you deal with you're dealing with that couple but why the other ones had to go so did you work there at some point and something happened um was it money <sighs> yeah i just can't shake money right now so that's where i'm at trying to still trying to figure it out like y'all the one thing that really stands out uh is during his arrest right he never once asked why he was being arrested. But why is something we are certainly asking Chad. Something we are still asking to this day. Chad Isaac was living in Washburn at the time. That's a, that's a small town about 40 minutes north of Mandan City. And what he did, uh, let me tell you, well okay, no, I'm just referring to his occupation for now. And what he did for a living was crack the back. Dr. Chad, at your service. I hope he didn't look at patients with those Manson lamps. He was a licensed chiropractor, a license he was issued in 2009 and until 2019, so for a decade he had a clean record, no complaints. He operated, if that's what you'd say, uh, out of his office on Main Street Washburn, his signage being oddly prophetic. Chad was a native of Riverdale, not the Netflix show uh, North Dakota, and he graduated high school in 1992. From there, he joined the US Navy. He'd remained there for five years, being sent off to Hawaii. Remember Pearl Harbor, because that's where he was based. And he would end up marrying, in 1995, a local uh, Hawaiian woman. They would have a daughter together, followed by a divorce together in 2000, leading to a number of court encounters over child support payments. It was in the year 2006, after moving around a bit, Nevada, Iowa, North Dakota, and studying nursing for a time, and that's when he realized his gosh darn, excuse my French, dream of becoming a, hey, give me your back, I'm gonna crack. See, Chad had been a football fanatic in high school, but an injury, fractured vertebrae, cut short his dreams of a scholarship. He saw a number of different medical professionals to treat his back. It was fucked. And they were all, uh, unhelpful. You know, all that until he went and saw a chiropractor and saw the light. Now you think like details about ch Now y'all think he was doing something crooked and they were threatening to tell? You know how some of these doctors, man, you go there and like, you know, when a doctor, some of the, you used to hear the stories back in the day about these ones that they would put you under anesthesia and these women were filing cases because while they were under, under anesthesia, things were happening to them. So you think that might have been the case? Like I said, I'm still spitballing at this point, people. I'm just throwing darts at the wall. <laughs> Chad's life would kind of be everywhere, you know, after he was arrested and what he was arrested for. But no, not really a whole lot is known about Chad Isaac. Maybe because there's not really a whole lot to know. He was a quiet guy. He kept to himself. Police, they spoke to his patients. The unanimous verdict was, well, didn't really know him or much about. Quiet, calm, didn't didn't say much. No criminal record. The most the most of his, you know, interactions with police were, yeah, a few years earlier, he was driving in North Dakota without a seatbelt. So his arrest for a quadruple homicide was a bit like, really? Him? Egg? But Chad did have a connection, right, to or J Orr. Uh, that being, he lived in a trailer park that was maintained by them. So how did the police arrive here, right, on Dr. Chad's doorstep? Well, what led the police to Chad was, uh, quite simply, his Ford F-150. See, the morning of the 1st of April, the police, doing their due diligence and checking nearby CCTV footage, on the surveillance footage, they saw a man entering the Orj or building at about 6.47 a.m. Less than 20 minutes later, he was out. And they had a suspect profile, orange mask, orange jacket, dark pants, shoes, gloves. At 7.08 a.m., the man was seen leaving in an Orj or vehicle. Surveillance from a few buildings along the way showed the car speeding off before being ditched. And then CCTV showed the fellow walk to a parked Ford F-150 in a McDonald's car park. It was in that McDonald's that someone actually called 911 to report a, a suspicious guy wearing a camouflage mask on a remarkably warm morning. 
There was no order activity until about 7.19 a.m. when another employee arrived to the office for another day at work. They were in the car, had a smoke, eventually walked in, saw Robert on the floor. He thought he had a heart attack or something, so you know, he ran over, rolled him over, then to do some chest compressions, and that's when he saw. But the emergency services then arrived about 7.30, thereabouts. So, that white Ford F-150 was determined to be the suspect's vehicle pretty quickly. And two days after the murders, a Bolo alert was put out. And it just so happened, right, that one of Chad Isaac's patients was a county sheriff's lieutenant. One of the many people who received that Bolo. This guy knew full well what car Chad drove. So, on the morning of the 4th of April, he drove over to Chad's trailer park and took pictures of his truck. Chad was watching him as he did so. The markings, the rust, the logo stickers, dirt spots, Ooh. dead giveaway. Gotcha, buddy. Gotcha. He contacted the Bureau of Criminal Investigations agents, and after looking at their CCTV, he thought the walk was the very same. And so, on the fort, Chad was arrested at a traffic stop. Chad had scratches and bruises on his knees. He said they were from his dog and from tripping and falling. Definitely, definitely not from murdering people at close range, you know? A search of Chad's place revealed there was a very strong smell of bleach. They found the very same clothing seen in CCTV, a reversible mask and weapons. A knife found in the washing machine with a bent tip and a gun believed to have been used in the murders. Shell casings were also found that matched the number of rounds fired at Orj Or. Shoes similar to those seen in the CCTV footage were found. 16 pairs of them. When you know what you want, you know what you want, I guess. See, and that's the thing, where the killer always think they covered all their bases. You see, obviously he was trying to clean up, but he didn't throw away or dispose of this stuff. You don't think they got video of you? Nah, because he thought since he parked in, in McDonald's and and he 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 cautiously did everything right. No, you're not. They're going to get you some type of something is going to lead them to you. Just so happened that somebody recognized your vehicle, bro, and they work for law enforcement. That's what I'm saying, man. They're gonna get you, bro. They're gonna get you. Yes. Ammo stored in a microwave. That uh, doesn't seem safe, but hey, uh, you gotta put them somewhere. Traces of blood were also found on his truck. A man has been arrested in connection to the four murders in Mandan, North Dakota this week. The suspect, 44-year-old Chad Isaac, was pulled over about 40 miles north of Mandan. He's being held on four counts of felony murder. Police say the victim suffered either stab wounds and or gunshot wounds. Not guilty. That's the plea from accused murderer Chad Isaac. No emotive. Like, this is obviously a horrendous, brutal, gruesome crime to do to four people. Why would somebody do that? Good question. To date, hasn't been answered. Now, obviously, he was targeting his landlords, right? So, you know, rumors abounded, and you gotta think, you know, they were gonna raise the rent on him. They were gonna kick him out. They were gonna kick his dog out. These, everybody was talking about this at the time. Police followed up on all of these, uh, you know, theories about why he could have done this, and all of them proved untrue. By all accounts, and by, you know, speaking to employees at Orj Orr, Chad had minimal interactions with them, and when he did have interactions with them, they were grand. Hmm. After multiple delays, the trial began in August 2021, 854 days after four people were brutally slain. April 1st, 2019 is a day that many people will never forget. It's the day that Justin Bachheim walked into work at RJR Maintenance and Management Company and found his boss, Robert Fockler, lying on the shop floor, covered in a pool of blood. It's the day that paramedics arrived 
at what they believed was a cardiac arrest call, only to find their victim covered in stab wounds. And it's the day that Mandan police officers arrived at that same crime scene, conducted a protective sweep of the premises, and found not one, not even two, but three additional victims. Now, let me tell y'all what's crazy about what she just said, right? It was one part in there that was crazy, right? Because y'all know, I used to be an EMT. Now, that's one of the scariest things that to have happened to you. Why? Because you're rolling up on what you thought was a cardiac arrest, somebody having maybe heart heart attack or something going wrong heart-wise, and you may have to get there and do some, some work on them, right? But you get there because normally if you're rolling up on a scene, something like that, you want to alert PD first, and then you want to arrive once PD de deems it safe. Because you never know if in a situation like that, is the killer still present? They're still there? Is what's going on? So you want to make sure the scene is safe and secure before you proceed forward. Sucks, but that's the way it needs to be because you have to protect. How, how am I going to help somebody, save somebody, if my life isn't, isn't even protected? You know what I'm saying? So it's always been I, protect me, we, the people that I came with to save you, and then the per pe person that we're saving. That's always been I, we, they. So that's what's scary about that. Now they roll up on scene. They realize they're in the middle of a situation. Now you got to scramble to get PD there. And you, you're, you know what I'm saying? It's so many different things, man. That's the type of stuff we used to constantly, you know, train on, have discussions and meetings about how do we handle these types of situations. William Cobb, Lois Cobb, and Adam Fuhrer each one covered in gunshot wounds and stab wounds. With the prosecution saying this is what happened that morning. On the 1st of April at 5.25 a.m., the suspect, Chad, parked his truck at McDonald's about a 15 minute walk from Orjor. This was something he had done a trial run on a week before on the 25th of March traveling there early that morning. Mm. This was the planning and preparation, you know, the prosecution were going to show that he, he full, fully knew what he was doing. At 6.30 a.m., Bill and Lois Cobb entered the building after having a smoke. Fifteen minutes later, Chad was seen following them in. At 7 a.m., Adam Fuhrer entered the building. At 7.06, Robert Faulkner entered. They were walking into a buzzsaw. The suspect then left, stole Robert's truck, and then ditched it three minutes later, going back to his own. The victims were all in uh, different parts of the building. He followed the cobs in and then was waiting for whoever else would walk in. Bill had been shot between a minimum of four times to a maximum of eight. He also had been stabbed 28 times. Dang. Lois had been stabbed 48 times, 16 times to the face and neck alone. She also had been shot in the chest. Adam, he was shot three times, twice in the back, once in the front. He was also stabbed 11 times. So what was he so pissed at? What could have been, what could make you, what, they raised your rates? They didn't fix your toilet? What could you, they, they're evicting you? What could you have been that madly passionate at? Robert Faulkner was stabbed 11 times and had numerous wounds to his face. Three of those stab wounds injured his heart. He, he wasn't shot at all. So he was seen at Orj or wearing orange, and then at McDonald's, 
wearing black. He changed his clothing along the way. A special agent from the Bureau of Criminal Investigation said this was quite interesting. Right, he's wearing all orange. That's, you know, hunter's clothing. He wore hunter's clothing when he was hunting people. He then changed his clothes at some point to dark, dark clothing to avoid being seen. He failed. So you can kind of see how, you know, all roads, right, lead to chats. So what did the uh, defense have to say? They, you know off rip, they're going to try to go with the insanity plea, right? Just straight up. We, we should be used to this type of stuff. When all else fails, insanity plea. Law enforcement has mammoth resources now to investigate anyone. Some of these are public searches, many are not. What did the law enforcement officers find doing this sort of investigation about Dr. Isaac? Nothing incriminating. No criminal history of any kind, either in the military or civilian world. No bankruptcies, no lawsuits, nothing of any consequence to make him a suspect in any crime, much less a crime of this magnitude. Well, they disputed all of this, no shit, that the integrity of the crime scene, you know, uh, w was compromised. That shot, no problems with RJ or, but other tenants and some other ex-employees were disgruntled and had made threats. So basically, the police did a piss poor job of investigating this, these murders. Really? But most of all, they said, you know, all the evidence was, uh, was circumstantial, right? Nothing definitively proved he was there that morning or did it. Other evidence, law enforcement even ignored relevant evidence near the crime scene. On July 2nd, several months after Dr. Isaac was arrested, RGR employees find a bullet, an intact bullet in a gravel area near RJR. So they thought this might be relevant to the crime that happened, a bullet. Um, law enforcement takes the bullet, but they don't test it or investigate further because it didn't match any evidence they had seized from Dr. Isaac. Other tips had come in and very few were followed up on in any detail. Other people with motive, recall the list of angry residents. BCI did no follow up here. They did assign some follow up to the Mandan Police Department. There were some half hearted interviews in the fall of 2019, but nothing substantive. Only a fraction of the people on the list were even called. Most could not be located or interviewed. Same thing with disgruntled employees. Law enforcement believed that they solved this case in four days and they spent many months trying to prove that they were right. They weren't, they simply confirmed what they believed and they ignored the rest. At the conclusion of this trial, I'm gonna appear before you again and ask that you find Dr. Isaac not guilty of all charges. Thank you. By all accounts, he had good relations with the management company. Really? And although Chad had canceled appointments the morning of the shootings, people who saw him in the afternoon of April 1st they said he was fine, no different than usual. Didn't see anything odd about his mental state. Now, one thing I will say, if they was going to at least try something, they should have been like, look at this dude on the film. Because he does look like a skinny dude. The dude on the film looks like big, like like he was bigger. You know what I mean? So I'd have tried that. It, it, you might would have tried that. Look at that person. They're two disproportionate sized people. Other than that, uh, uh, what, what else you got, bro? <laughs> or his physical state. Though, when Chad cancelled chiropractic appointments on the morning of the 1st of April, he told his patients, you know, he couldn't see them. He had a dental appointment. Checking in with the dentist he went to, his regular, he hadn't been there since May 2017. He hadn't been there in two years. Got him. And he certainly was not there the morning of the 1st of April. Throughout the testimony in this case, you have heard that investigators followed that evidence. That evidence figuratively and literally led us to Chad Trollen Isaac. His vehicle matches the suspect vehicle in all unique features. Considerable effort had been taken to wash and bleach the suspect clothing and to bleach weapons. They solved this crime in four days. Unfortunately, they didn't. They spent several months trying to prove that they were right. They weren't. And that was that?
This dude like Jerry Springer, brother, don't he? <laughs> I'll read the uh, jury's verdict at this time. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn to try the above entitled action, do find the defendant, Chad Trollin Isaac, number one, as to the offense of murder of Lois Cobb as charged in count one of the information, guilty. <coughs> number two, as to the offense of murder of William Cobb as charged in count two of the information, guilty. Question three. As to the offense of murder of Adam Fuhrer, as charged in count three of the information, guilty. Number four. As to the offense of murder of Robert Faulkner, as charged in count four of the information, guilty. Members of the jury, is this your unanimous verdict? Yes. The grief we feel for the four lives we tragically lost on April 1st, 2019, isn't something that a, sorry, isn't something that a trial will fix. A trial two and a half years in the making has come to an end. Honestly, um, it, it didn't take care of anything. We don't know why. Um, it's changed us and we'll never get that back. Chad Isaac being fan. I don't even know how they still like. I would be coming to work like. Then once I open the door, I wouldn't even. First of all, I wouldn't even work there no more. Let's start there. But they got to be showing up to work nervous. Like this, how can you go on and work there every day? Like I'd be looking over my shoulder as I'm walking in the door. As soon as I close the door, I would back up facing the door though, backing up, making sure nobody trying to walk in behind me. Like, I'd be scarred. How do you go on? And Guilty now faces life in prison without parole. No word on when the sentencing will be, but it won't be good for him. And that's the end of that old one. Uh, what a strange case. As I said, no motive has ever been revealed, if there even was one at all. And not that they needed to prove there was one, but what a thing to do for seemingly no reason at all. He was a loner, but he had a, you know, a seemingly successful business. For him to just snap and brutally murder four people, four people he didn't really have any connection at all with. Why? We may never know, but that's not a, you know, a snap. That's a full on rupture from reality. But that's the story of Chad Isaac and what he did. We don't know why. We don't know the full extent. We're just trying to, you know, piece together the pieces of the puzzle that were left behind hopefully someday we will know but not today listen man this one is for all the people that that are like die hard this person doesn't have a criminal record it couldn't have been them this person see what see how somebody just proves you wrong all of a sudden one day somebody could just snap Yeah, you know I mean, so yeah, man, y'all be careful, safe going in and out of workplaces, Pay, careful who you come in contact with. What we're seeing with all these cases that we check out, man, it could be any type of scenario. You know what I mean? Any type, something you think is harmless, somebody may take and they're willing to go to, they're willing to throw their whole life away for it. Y'all be safe out there, man. You know what I'm saying? Be safe. Let me know what you thought of this video and uh, stick around and stay tuned, man. Until next reaction, I'm gone. Peace.